Welcome to trailhead number seven in this third series of the Anglican tradition. In this series, I have tried to emphasize more than in a session one or series one and series two, the Canadian tradition of Anglicanism. And I focused a little more on what we would call Canadian red Tory Anglicanism. I mentioned in earlier parts of this series the important role of high Tories within the English tradition, particularly uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, William Wordsworth, and Robert Southey as what we would call eco-theology or people very concerned with the relationship of theology and the environment. Within the Canadian tradition of red Tories, and we could also add, uh, we often talk about Anglicans being Tories at prayer. What do we mean by that? Well, it's often meant in a negative way that Anglicans have been servants of power, whether servants of the state or the military and big business, versus liberal forms of political thought and faith or leftist forms of political thought and faith. But when we bring together Anglicans and red Tories, that's a quite a different understanding of Tories at prayer. And then when we think of people like the high romantics, Wordsworth, Coleridge, Southey, who are very concerned with green theology, we can begin to see that Tories at prayer, if understood properly, need not be right-wing Tories, but in fact can bring together green and red when they thread together theology, philosophy, and public witness. And so this turn to an understanding of the Anglican Church of Canada and how it brings together biblical exegesis, theology, philosophy, and public witness in a Tory manner, this can thread together the importance of the high romantics of England, green theology, with red Toryism to understand the significance of what Toryism just might mean in a much more substantive way when we say Tories at prayer. I want to briefly touch on now, because I have mentioned more philosophical, theological, political red Tories of the like of Bishop John Strawn, Stephen Leacock, Donald Creighton, George Grant, I want to, in a very hasty way, briefly discuss two important literary Tories. One, well, the, one, the um, Governor General's Award for Poetry, the People's Award for Poetry, and this is Milton Acorn. Probably one of the most significant, if not the most significant, Canadian Anglican poet in the latter half of the 20th century who very much built on the great Anglican Confederation poets. Milton Acorn, his own understanding of faith, poetry, and politics brought together a vision of faith which was deeply grounded in the environment and ecological issues. One of his earlier works is called The Red and Green Pony in the 1950s that he brought together red and green. He was very high church Anglican in that sense coming out of the maritime Anglo-Catholic tradition and he was very concerned with the issues of poverty and nuclearism and all of the big issues that beset uh, many who were living in Canada and in the world uh, in the latter years of the 20th century. His poetry, like I've Tasted My Blood and many other works, have been at the forefront of bringing together the very best of Anglicanism, culture, poetry, politics, and as I said, red and green, that is very indebted to the high romantics. And so in red Toryism or high Toryism in Anglicanism in Canada, we continue an ancient story. Maria Fiamengo is another significant Anglican poet. She is retired on the west coast of Canada, just as Milton Acorn was on the east coast of Canada. Maria Fiamengo deeply grounded in the Anglican tradition. Again, a Catholic Anglican has written exquisite and evocative poetry that deals with the soul's journey to God, uh, the life in the church, 
and then again the larger political issues that are very much with us today. And so there is theological, there is political and philosophical red Toryism in Canada, and then there is literary red Toryism in Canada, all grounded in the historic Canadian Anglican way of which Milton Acorn and Maria Fiamengo are exquisite embodiments of that rich and dynamic Anglican way.